What up, YouTube? Let's here. Thanks again for visiting the channel. As always, I appreciate it. Uh, today we're going to be doing a quick review on the Grimsmo Norseman. Uh, let me tell you, this uh, this knife is the bee's knees. Absolutely love it. This thing is great. Uh, so a buddy of mine uh, sent this to me uh, to take a peek at. Uh, this gentleman's name is uh, Marlon Spike EDC on Instagram. Please go give him a follow. Uh, I'd really appreciate that. Uh, help to support the people that support my channel. Uh, so yeah, that would be awesome. Uh, again, this is the Grimsmo Norseman. <clears throat> um, kind of a difficult to get knife. Uh, the uh, Grimsmo company, uh, I think they make mostly uh, uh, custom folders, uh, but they also do some production work. Uh, and that's what this one is, one of their production knives. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, this guy has an overall length of eight and a half inches. Uh, a blade length of 3.75 inches and a uh, cutting edge of uh, three and a half. Uh, the handle itself is 4.85 inches. Uh, let me go ahead and do the size comparisons here. Compared to the Rat Model 1, uh, the Grimsmo Norseman is uh, just a little bit longer than the Rat 1. Uh, compared to the Rat Model 2, the Grimsmo Norseman is uh, quite a bit longer, obviously. Uh, the Demco knives, uh, the Demco AD20S, uh, is going to be just a little bit shorter than this guy, only by a hair, and, uh, the AD20.5, uh, is going to be quite a bit shorter than the Norseman. Um, the Spyderco's, let's see, the Spyderco PM2, uh, is going to be just a little bit shorter than the Norseman, and the Para 3, uh, obviously, is going to be quite a bit shorter uh, than the Norseman. Uh, carry profile. I just realized I forgot to do carry profile in my last video. Sorry about that, guys. Let's get this guy closed. Okay. Uh, so the Norseman is just going to be a hair longer still than the PM2 with the blade closed. Uh, and thickness. Pretty sure the Para 3 is going to be just a little bit thicker than the Norseman. Yep. There you go. And uh, the blade height, the Norseman, even at its tallest point, uh, is nowhere near as tall as the Para 3. So it's not too bad in the pocket. Uh, the weight on this guy is uh, 4.9 ounces. Uh, so it's a little bit on the heavier side, but not terrible. Um, so like I said, it's uh, pretty good in the pocket. Uh, shouldn't cause you any trouble there. Uh, the blade stock thickness on this guy, just make sure, make sure this is zeroed out. Okay, so the blade stock thickness for the Norseman is going to be about 130 thousandths. Pretty good. All right, uh, so we're looking at a blade steel here of RWL 34, um, and we have a profile. Uh, this is definitely a Tanto. Um, I don't know if there's anything else you call this, but I, I, you know, I'm also going to call it a recurve blade, obviously, because it's got a recurve to it. Um, this guy uh, has a hollow grind, um, and these lines here, I'm not sure if that has to do with the um, the blacksmithing process or, you know, how they do that exactly, uh, but it looks beautiful. I, I absolutely love it. You're either, um, you know, most people are on the fence about this guy. I'm, I'm sorry. Most people, this knife is pretty polarizing. Either you love it or you hate it. Uh, but there are some people that are undecided on it. Uh, I like it a lot. I think it's absolutely just super interesting and just a really, really nice uh, conversation starter uh, of a knife. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd definitely show this guy off as much as I possibly could if I owned it. Um, we are looking at uh, a knife here running on bearings. Uh, no blade play up, down, left, or right. Uh, let's see how the balance is. Balance is right behind the pivot, absolutely right where you want it. So that's perfect. Um, the hardware on this guy, uh, it comes with its own tool that you can use to disassemble it. Uh, and believe it or not, these are all T9 screws. Um, I don't know what the pocket clip is because the pocket clip screw is internal, uh, but that's not a big deal. Um, obviously, the scales in this guy are uh, titanium 
uh, textured titanium or milled titanium. Uh, very subtle crosshatch milling here, which is really comfortable. Uh, it's I don't know if you'd call it stimmy or you know what, but it's I, I really like the way the uh, the scales are textured on this guy. I like it a lot. Um, we have a, a titanium uh, pocket clip here as well. <clears throat> cool little um, uh, warrior helmet here on the uh, bottom of the pocket clip, which is pretty sweet. Um, I, I don't know if I said it or not, but it's running on bearings. Uh, and uh, the deployment on this guy is out of this world. It, it flies out of the handle super easily. Uh, and you have two different methods of deployment here. You can use the thumb studs uh, or you can use the flipper. Uh, speaking of thumb studs, speaking of thumb studs, uh, <laughs> I just uh, I sent a message to Marlon Spike today because uh, uh, yesterday uh, when I you know, get knives of this caliber. I don't really do anything with them other than just kind of get to know them. I, I flip them open and closed and, um, you know, just turn it back and forth, looking at it, uh, just looking at the lines, the different colors. Uh, I don't do any serious cutting or any, really any cutting of any kind with these kinds of, with these knives that I borrow from people just cause I don't want to mess them up. Uh, so I was in my bathroom, uh, opening this guy, open, close, open, close, uh, and then I went to open it again and nothing happened. Uh, so uh, I looked down at the knife and there's no thumb studs. So my heart sank. I, immediately, I was terrified. Uh, and then uh, I looked down uh, and I saw one of the thumb studs uh, right next to my foot. Uh, so, you know, instant 50% relief uh, <laughs> of the situation. Um, but then, you know, I'm looking around for the other thumb stud and I, and I finally see it. It's, uh, laying there on the ground, rocking back and forth, uh, on the edge of the cover, uh, to my heating duct in the bathroom. Uh, so I literally almost shit my pants. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, I didn't want to move. I was terrified that if I bent over to, to grab it or anything, the, the displacement of air would, would push it over the edge and then I'd hear clink, 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 and then actually shit my pants. Uh, so <laughs> just very slowly bent over and very gingerly picked it back up. Uh, and I, I put it back on the knife here and I'm tightening it down nice and nice and tight so that that won't happen again. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure that's just because of, uh, you know, deploying the knife over and over and over again, cause the screws to become loosened a little bit. Uh, and then they just fell right off. I just, I, <laughs> <laughs> he thought that was pretty funny, though. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I don't really have a price on this guy. I think I think they normally go for around $1,000, give or take 100, 100 or 200 bucks. Uh, but, obviously, this currently is not something that you can just go out and buy. Uh, you know, they do drops every once in a while. And if you choose to call the company and, and you know, make a custom order, I, I don't know if their books are open right now, but you can also do that. Uh, so I don't know for sure. Uh, I don't think at all that there's anywhere right now that you can get this guy. Uh, but if you're interested, just keep an eye out. Um, you know, a lot of times they will release them on Arizona custom knives. Uh, I believe they also, uh, release them. Actually, I'm not really sure. <laughs> I think, I think for sure that they were, they do drop every once in a while on Arizona custom knives, but I'm not sure where else actually that you can get these guys. Uh, but uh, definitely, if you're interested in it, I think it's worth the uh, worth the wait uh, to get one of these guys. Uh, so you've got a titanium frame lock on this guy with a, um, a pretty large uh, steel lock bar insert. Uh, and it looks like it's locking up at about 55 to 60 percent. Um, you've got, uh, some pretty aggressive, I don't know if I call it aggressive jimping, but you've got some large jimping up here on the thumb ramp. Uh, it's not super sharp or anything like that. They've got it, um, contoured down pretty good. So it's very comfortable in the hand, uh, with the pocket clip being flat, uh, you know, that makes it so that there's no real issues with any hot spots on this knife at all. Uh, and you do have a pretty good size, uh, finger choil here, uh, forward finger choil and uh, a sharpening choil there as well. A very small one, but it's there. Um, and again, uh, the contouring on everything on this knife, you've got a you know, radius spine, 
Uh, you've got a lot of contouring here on the uh, on the forward finger twill to make it nice and comfortable. And uh, all the edges here knock down very, very nicely. Uh, you've got a hole here, obviously, for a lanyard. Uh, and you've also got a couple of standoffs here. There's no backspacer or anything on this knife. Um, this definitely seems like, I don't know if I'd call it a... a a niche knife, but it's, it's not, you have to kind of really be interested in it in order to get one. Cause they're, cause they're so expensive. Uh, and, and I don't know if I'd say odd looking, um, but they're just very, very different from anything else that's out there. Uh, so really cool knife. I'm really glad I got an opportunity to take a look at it. I have to thank Marlon Spike a lot for that. Uh, and you know, now that I'm, now that I'm done taking a look at these knives and, um, I've done the reviews on them, I'm going to send them back to him. Uh, so I think that's it for today, guys. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to mention one of the most important aspects of this knife. Uh, the, um, the disengagement and action on this guy, I mean, it's so, so, so smooth. I mean, you can see it just drops. You don't have to do anything at all. Uh, it, it follows the lead of the handle. Uh, it drops almost all the way down once you disengage the lock. And then all you have to do is slowly and gently lift up the hand, the back of the handle a little bit, and it falls right back down. Uh, the detent is is good. Uh, I've never had any issues deploying it or anything like that. Uh, so the detent on this knife seems to be tuned very, very, very well. Uh, and again, the action on these things is just so buttery, buttery smooth. It's insane uh, how smooth these knives are and how easily they drop down. Uh, I can absolutely understand why, you know, all the hype about this knife with the action and, and how smooth they are. Um, so, yeah, I think that's it, guys. Uh, I appreciate you watching. Uh, thanks again for visiting the channel. If you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. Stay up, y'all. Take it easy. Bye.